Be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You all may be seated, please.
We gather here this evening in God's presence tonight, Robert and Jennifer in holy matrimony. It was God himself who first originated marriage when he said that Amalaliba's father, his mother, cleave to his wife, and the two would become one. Jesus Christ himself put his sanction on the marriage ceremony by attending the marriage supper in Cain of Galilee, performing his first miracle there. Symbolically, what I think Christ was saying was that he would like to be a part of your lives and your relationship, and I would hope that when you two experience times of difficulty, disappointment, and heartache like everyone does in life, that you would look up and ask for God's help, his guidance, and his direction. And on the other side of the coin, when you experience those great times of happiness, fulfillment, and success, like I know you too will, that you would also take the time to thank God for blessing your lives, for blessing your home, and for blessing that very special love that you two have found together. So it is out of affection for Robert and Jennifer that you as guests, friends, and family are here to witness and bless their vows, which will unite them this day in marriage. At this moment, they bring the fullness of their hearts as a treasure to share with one another. They bring the dreams which bind them together. They bring that particular personality and spirit which is uniquely their own and out of which will grow the reality of their lives together. We rejoice with them that this outward symbol of an inward union of hearts is a union created by friendship, respect, and love. Each of you, family or friend, has given something of benefit to them. Your love and support will forever be appreciated. It is fitting then that you are here to share in this celebration of their commitments to each other to live their lives as one. The bond that holds two people together is not always a strand of silk, but a length of rope. Whatever the bond, it is neither stronger nor weaker than the two people who would have it so. As long as you choose to travel the same road, neither your fortunes nor your misfortunes can be divided. In essence, if one laughs, he both laugh. If one cries, you both cry. If one separates his or her needs as more important than the others, then you are not together. And while one should not stand in the shadow of the other, neither should seek the sun without the other. For the bond to work, both must be together in all things. I often think relationships can be defined by the quality of caring, and at its best, it is a healthy, mutual exchange of thoughts, feelings, and experiences. It is a home for one's soul, a place to be yourselves and explore your deepest inner yearnings, fears, hopes, and joys without that fear of condemnation, rejection, or being abandoned. It's an environment where you can relax and are even comforted and gain the strength to fight the daily challenges of life. It's being secure in the knowledge that you are each other's very best friend and that no matter what happens, you're going to stand by one another. There is a very important principle that I'd like to share with couples that I do have the opportunity of marrying, and I'm sure after spending time together, getting to know each other, experiencing some of life, you're quite aware that love is so much more than just mere feelings. I like to say that love is a decision as well as a commitment between the two of you. So if you allow your love to be based upon that commitment rather than just your feelings, you'll find that through the good times, maybe some rough times, and for a very long time to come, your love is going to last and endure. Today, what you are doing, Robert and Jennifer, is confirming that commitment to love each other for the rest of your lives. Allow your love to be based upon that decision, and you won't be disappointed. At this time, Chelsea is going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, I have not love. I am only a resounding gong or a clinging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy, I can fathom all mysteries and knowledge. And if I have the faith, have a faith think, uh, that can move on, it, sorry, <laughs> but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body, to the flames, but have nothing. Have not love. I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. 
It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. But where are the prophecies? They will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But in it, perfection comes, the impression perfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see, but a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I part, now I know in part, that I shall fully, that I shall know fully. Even as I am known fully. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Robert, will you take Jennifer to be your wife, and will you commit yourself to her happiness? Will you promise to love her, honor her, trust and cherish her in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity? Will you give her strength in times of uncertainty and support her in times of need, comfort her in times of sorrow, laugh with her in times of joy? Will you promise to be her true and loyal friend as well as her partner, so long as you both shall live? Yes. Jennifer, will you take Robert to be your husband? Will you also commit yourself to his happiness? Will you promise to love him, honor him, trust and cherish him in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity? Will you give him strength in times of uncertainty and support him in times of need, comfort him in times of sorrow, laugh with him in times of joy? Will you promise to be his true and loyal friend as well as his partner, so long as you both shall live? I do. You know, a good marriage, it has to be created. And in the art of marriage, the little things, they often become the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say I love you in word and deed at least once each day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers in your whole family. It is speaking words of appreciation demonstrating gratitude in many thoughtful ways. It is having the capacity to forgive and to forget. It is providing an atmosphere in which each of you can grow. It is finding room for the things of the spirit. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is not only marrying the right partner, but it is being the right partner. At this time, Robert, Jennifer, and Rosalind are going to be participating in the sand blending ceremony. Symbolizing their individual lives becoming one.
the sand they blended into the middle vase becomes the symbol of their individual needs be putting aside and reflecting on the needs of the family. It is a union of two family traditions with two systems of roots in the hopes that a new family tree may become strong and fruitful by making the decision to become committed to lasting relationships. We have the rings, please, at this time. are a symbol of your love in a couple of ways. The circular form has no beginning, no ending. Represents that the commitments you make today are eternal and everlasting. They also represent openness and honesty. And I would hope above all things that you two would always make it a priority to be open and honest with one another because that is the only way that your love will continue to grow, to mature, but most importantly, to last through all those years that you have promised to each other today. i take the ring. And then her left hand, ring finger, and repeat after me. Jennifer, with this ring. Jennifer, with this ring. As God is my witness. As God is my witness. I pledge my life. I pledge my life. And my love to you. And my love to you. This ring is a token. This ring is a token. Of my faithfulness. Of my faithfulness. My commitment. My commitment. My devotion. My devotion. May you wear it. May you wear it. As a proclamation. As a proclamation. That we are married that we are married and have a wonderful life together and we have a wonderful life together each time you look at this ring each time you look at this ring let it remind you let it remind you what a priceless gift what a priceless gift you are to me you are to me Robert with this ring Robert with this ring as God is my witness as God is my witness I pledge my life. I pledge my life. And my love to you. And my love to you. This ring is a token. This ring is a token. Of my faithfulness. Of my faithfulness. My commitment. My commitment. My devotion. My devotion. May you wear it. May you wear it. As a proclamation. As a proclamation. That we are married. That we are married. And have a wonderful life and together. And have a wonderful <laughs> life together. Each time. Each time you look at this ring. You look at this ring. That it reminds you. That it reminds you. What a priceless gift. What a priceless gift. You are to me. You are to me. Emmett Fox spoke these words, there is no difficulty that enough love will not conquer, no door that enough love will not open, no gulf that enough love will not bridge, no wall that enough love will not throw down, and no sin that enough love will not redeem. For you see, it makes no difference how deeply seated may be your trouble, how hopeless your outlook, how much your tangle, or perhaps maybe even how great your mistake. A sufficient realization of the love you share together will dissolve it all. If only you two could love enough, you would be the happiest and the most powerful beings in the whole world. May your marriage bring you all the exquisite excitements a marriage can bring. May life grant you also patience, tolerance, and understanding. May you always need one another, not so much to fill your emptiness as to help you to know your fullness. Thankful for the many meanings of this hour, overjoyed by all its promises. I hope that the spirit of trust, understanding, and love may be with you through all those years that lie ahead. Whatever trials and testings may come, may you trust each other wholly, for without such faith, marriage is a mockery. May you understand each other, for without understanding, there is neither acceptance nor forgiveness. And may you truly love one another, for without love, marriage is only an empty shell. As you build a life and a home together, may that home be bright with the laughter of family and friends, may be a haven from the tensions of our time and a wellspring of strength, and in all the world may be that one place you most want to be together. So may the shining hour be an open door through which you two will go forward to build what I still think is one of the dearest of all relationships, a happy, harmonious marriage. May the years deal gently with you Walking together, may you find far more in life than either would have found alone. And even more fully, may you come to know this one supreme truth, that caring is sharing, that living is giving, that life is eternal, and that love is your most precious gift.
We bow our heads for word prayer, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, I would like to ask a very special blessing today upon the lives of Robert and Jennifer as they continue this journey through life together. Lord, may they realize that it does take a tremendous amount of effort, wisdom, and understanding for their relationship to become <coughs> the very best that it can possibly be. Bring much happiness their way, help their love to grow month by month and year by year. Help turn their adversities into advantages, whatever tragedies they have into triumphs, their failures into opportunities. Allow them to be better people together than apart and let their love relationship, their commitment to each other be a good example to friends and families of what a true loving relationship is all about. Bless them especially this day, the day they've taken their vows, made those commitments before you. We thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Since you too have made these commitments before God and these witnesses, the law is vested in me by the state of California as an ordained minister, I now pronounce that Robert and Jennifer are husband and wife. But love has joined together. Let nothing or no one ever separate you two. Get going. 